What is up guys, this is Ferriton here with another tutorial, which is not really one that I've done before. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky one actually, uh, which is making your animations like smooth. And I, I know I, I did have a tutorial recently about making smooth animations, but this is going to be like handmade animations. So look, smooth animations. It's, it's kind of different, but I don't know how to word it. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to open up a character with IK chain set. Um, and now I've got tutorials with IK chains now. Uh, so if I just take this off now, as we can see, we've got the soldier is rigged. Let me just put the camera in place so now I can just rotate around. Alright, so we've got the white rig in place and these green lines here. Are basically the eye chain, uh, the IK chains. So it's basically connecting the shoulder to the wrist, um, and everything else in between it will move along with it swiftly. Um, now I don't know. Uh, I, I'm going to give it a go, and I don't know how it's going to turn out. Now the thing you, is with animation, you can't really teach somebody. Oh, you can, this is how you animate. It's like you need to sort of do it yourself, and you need to get a feel for what Cinema 4D can do with the IK chains. So like, because I I know I've been using them for quite some time. I know that you shouldn't always go back up here because this is what happens to the model. But it's a bit unrealistic anyway. But you need to keep them relatively in a realistic position. Now I also know is like if you stretch the IK too far out, it will come away from the wrist. And that is what you don't want because if I just keyframe this now and then move forward and keyframe it when it's back connected to the wrist, if I now scroll through, you can see the keyframe uh, the keyframe moving. And if you look at the arm, like the elbow joint, it will just snap. See what I mean? It just snaps back into place. And it, that may make it a little bit different because obviously your arm's being stretched out as much as it can. It can't be stretched out no more because obviously the arcane is being separated from the wrist but as long as you keep the arm slightly bent which means keeping the IK still in the wrist so there that's the maximum I'll keep it and then I can move it in and then back out oh sorry back out again but still keeping a slight bend in it like in the joint otherwise that can make it a bit funny and a bit blocky if you know what I mean as you just saw there um, but another thing is like making smooth animations. What it depends really what you're doing as well. Like, each animation will be different, and that's why you can't really teach it. Um, but I'm gonna give you like little pointers as well. So if I put this back to where it was without the keyframes, uh, I think that's it. Yep. Right. If I want to move my. Uh, I'm just trying to think what little animation I could do with my arm in order to in order to do this. All right, you know what? Oh, this is a tricky one. I know. So we're gonna have our hand starting here in this position, and what what, what we want to do is we want to do like a you know I can't remember if you swim. And your arms, you push your arms out forward, and then you bring them round to your side. So it's like basically swimming, like a breaststroke. I want my arm to do that. So basically, how I would do that is I will pick the start position, hit a keyframe down, move forward to the end position, um, which would probably be here, but as you can see, my arm is being stretched, so bring that back in. So it's slightly joint, uh, slightly bent, sorry. And what we've done is we've got our basic movement. But that looks a bit weird and a bit, I don't know, uh, that looks a bit blocky to me, like it looks a bit weird. So then what I do is, because I want it to go round, we can see when I scroll through, it's just in a straight line. The keyframe, the wrist, is just moving in a straight line. But if we want it to be sort of bent, so we want it to go round as he like 
his arms forward and it goes round to his body, not backward, like sideways. I don't know how to explain it. Basically, what you do is you go halfway in between your frames. So I put 30 frames, so halfway will be 15. And what I do is I usually go into like top view or something like that. And you just bring it out a bit more and you click keyframe. And now, now you can see it adds a bend into the key. Oops. A bend into the keyframe. And if I look at this now, I don't uh, like. Uh, I didn't really look much different, to be fair. But in some cases, this is what I would do in order to make my animation a bit better. So I mean, you can. Oops, where'd that go? We. I mean, we can always move these points around as well. But then, if you start doing that, my arm's probably going to be stretched, as you can see. So if I, I bring that a little bit there. And there. I mean, I can also bring the the hand down. So if I go like that to about here as well. But the thing is, you may have to remove this middle keyframe and do it again because you've got a straight line on the top view and you've got a straight line on the front view. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to bring this down slightly. Oh no, no, actually no. We'll move it up slightly so it go it stays level and then it goes down. So if we do that, we've made a bend in the front view, and then we go to the top view, and we will bring it out here, and it will make a bend in the top view. And what's that done is that is actually made like a, a di like a diagonal arc for us, and that is an easy way to make smooth animations in this kind of direction. If you kind of understand what I'm getting at, and that's the reason why I haven't really done a tutorial like this before because it is really tricky, and you know. The IK chains can mess up. If you rig your character a bit differently, if something's out of place slightly, it can mess up. If you, like, I don't know, like, I'm going to show you right now. Delete the ankles. As you can see, my knees are slightly bent. They are not straight. Because if they were straight, you know, roughly, and I go to do my IK chains, which I'll just do one, and I'll create the IK chain and I'll start moving. Look at that. It starts one bending the other way and it bends sideways. And it's little things like that which you need to get used to through practice because that will affect your animation. 100% stuff like this will affect your animation. But all these little tips that I'm giving you, oh, like when you rig, always bend your knees and then put the IK chains on, I would advise sticking to them because those are the things that are going to help you create a much more smoother animation. Like this look. Now that looks a bit better, doesn't it? That looks like someone's foot is, you know, is he's stepping up, he's going to put his foot on a stairwell or, or, or some object. And like the other one, it was bending off to the right, it was, oh, it was doing fucking, I don't know what it was doing. <laughs> you know, but that, it's little things like that. Now, like I suggested, like, you could always do IK chains, and the reason for that is because, especially the arms and legs, you'll only do it for the arms and legs. Um, because all you have to do is just move the hand, and the forearm, the elbow, the shoulder, it's all animated for you. And it helps to create a realistic animation anyway, because it moves in, you know, the bones are built to move in the way that ours do. So you can't really get any more realistic than that unless you're amazing and I mean like top notch at self animations like with just animating the bones. You know, that 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 is really tricky, but you know, I, I would always advise IK chains. I always use them pretty much. Sometimes I don't, depends on the animation. Uh depends if the certain animation fucks up with IK chains because believe me it does. I mean what is it? I can't remember what I've done now. I'm not going to spend forever trying to figure it out. But yeah, like, if I get my other hand and I want to do, like, a, a wave, I don't know, let's quickly make a wave. So I would start it there. I want to lift the arm up. I want it to start there. So then we go forward to 30. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. And then to 50 and then back because, obviously, the arm's bending. I'll show you how to sort that out in a minute. And then we'll go back. So it's lifted his arm up and he's waving really basically. Now first of all, it has a line going up and it goes straight into it, which looks really weird. So 
What I do is I go halfway and I'll bend it slightly. Go halfway, move it up slightly, and what it does is I, I try and move the keyframes like I have here, and now that should go a bit more smoothly into the animation. If you look at the line, oh, goody, oh, can't do it. Hang on, can't call doing t at my <laughs> catch you in a few minutes. Alright, sorry about that, guys. Um, that's all good. Uh, so as you can see here, the line, this is like the path of the animation. If it's all line and blocky, you know you're going to have a blocky animation. But if you can get the, like all these nice and smooth, which it does get a bit like getting used to. So if I go through and do the rest, do go halfway here, bring it down ever so slightly, bring that down and bring that around a bit, just so we get the whole smooth animation into it. I mean, it looks a bit weird now, obviously, but um, I'll do it with the other wrist just for the fact that that one's already been used. All right, so we now have got the IK chain for the left wrist. What we can do is we can always go onto the left shoulder, which is where the IK was made. Click this button here, which is the, the IK, and you can just click Add Pole. And that will usually be added to the bottom of your wrist or, or your fingers. Um, but it's level with your shoulder if you close everything down. And what you can do is you can drag that in. Is that the left? Yeah. Drag that into the uh, into the wrist goal. So you put, you got the pole in the goal. <laughs> and what you can do is if I s slowly move this pole, you'll see how it affects it. If I move it like here it rotates the arm so I can then lift my hand up pull the pole down a bit rotate it so then you can get that wave in animation so um, if I just stay here um, oops I'll bring that one because obviously it, it will um, offset the animation completely because of the IK but if I just do up to 60 of just a little hand you know that, that, that. But as you can see, the elbow starts going inwards. So what we can do is we can grab the pole. Um, and as we move forward, we can move the pole a bit further back, maybe. Maybe a bit further this way. I don't know how that will look. Maybe this way. And what we can do is we can then... Uh, where is it? Copy and paste these. Because it goes 0 to 20 and then to 40 so it goes first, second, first, second all the way up to 60 and that as you see there that's made a hand animation and his elbow has not moved so that pole is useful but I have had many problems with this pole because it starts fucking up it starts making shit weight like this so you need to be careful on how you use it you don't want to make too much movement on the pole you want to keep it as little as possible uh, in my opinion so that's how I, this is my tutorial on how to make smooth animations. Um, I hope it kind of helped you guys actually. I mean, I want to try and get it out there, but I don't know how to explain it. Because, you know, it's not something you could really teach. It's just, like I said, practice. So, you know, and that's, that is a huge important part of um, being like stepping your, I don't know, stepping your mark up in animation, I don't know, you're getting better at it basically. You just, the more practice, the more you get used to Cinema 4D, how it works, how the arcade chains move, what, you know, what makes it look shit, little things like that, the way you rig it, the way you add the arcade chains in, little things like that, and each one of them, slight little thing, could completely mess it up, and it's different every time, um, but getting used to the way Cinema 4D works, you get used to it. And you know, okay, I need to do this in order to fix it. So the next time, you don't need to run into that problem again. But so, yeah, I hope, I hope that helped, guys. Um, if you have any questions, please... Um, uh, it'd be better, actually, if you, if you PM me now, because this Google Plus crap is annoying me. Because I don't see my messages anymore, because YouTube inbox, comment section, doesn't... You know, it's not used for comments no more, which is bloody stupid. You know, I think it's a comment section, use it for comments. That Google Plus shit, I didn't even want it anyway. You know. Oh, anyway, I'm not going to ramble on. I'm going to let you guys go. So please like and comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.